Right, welcome to this first video I'd like to make on the new COAV uh, remote control system. Uh, it's a, not only a remote control system, but it also has a HD video link, long range one, for the H16, the specified distance is about 5 to 10 kilometers. Uh, the H16 Pro is longer distance than that. Before we carry on, I'd just like to highlight that I'm not going to cover any detail on this video. This is just a little introductory video. Um, maybe share a few points that I saw for those that are uh, thinking of buying the unit. So this is just a basic introductory. We'll cover some detail in perhaps a future video. One thing that's very, very nice about this unit is the connectivity options on it. Now, I'm not going to go through through it now. You'll have to wait for the next video to see that. <laughs> uh, but maybe the second video, I'll cover that. All right, let's get going. There you can see a very nice carry case where you can put the unit in. Carry it around. There's, before we get to the camera, you'll see I'm wearing anti -static wrist, uh, an anti-static wrist strap and I've got an anti-static sheet under the, drone, under the drone. I'd like to encourage you to do that. Um, you know, there's some videos on YouTube that I've also seen that uh, people um, don't actually take these precautions. <clears throat> and if you damage the unit, you'll have to buy another one, which you really don't want to do. Uh, I think there's a misconception that electrostatic damage if the unit is still working that means there weren't any damage and that's not entirely true a lot of the damage is latent uh, in other words it um, it's damaged the unit and you don't want to have drones falling out of the sky so I'd like to encourage you to take those measures it's not very expensive right there's a camera unit very nice little camera based on the 4689 module and you can see there's two um, LED spotlights as well. Um, it gets switched on with a button on the remote control. I'll show that to you. Uh, and it's connected to the sky unit. There's the sky unit. Zoom in a little bit. Connectors all around. The manual covers all the connections. There's the remote control unit. There's some additional connectors which I haven't used. There's the charger. I just want to pause the video there. Uh, just take note of the connection type on the AC inlet of the charger. Um, your country might have different outlets. So you might have to uh, just get the universal adapter or something. So just take note of that. Um, then, of course, I've already connected my Sky unit to the uh, flight controller. So for this flight controller, it's got a set of cables. The, spec, the, the cables which I haven't used has got for the V5, etc., all, uh, all the other flight controllers. So it's got a comprehensive set of cables. I'll sp speak a little bit about that just now. And then I've used the connectors, connectors for the cables, the cables for the PIXAC V3X. All right, because I'm using the PIXAC V3X. Uh, just on that cables thing, I just want to bring up the manual, yeah? There you can see the manual. And in the manual, it actually shows you all the, the options, all right? So it's got a comprehensive set of connect cables. Um, but just double check, depending on what flight controller you're using, that your cable would actually be in the, in the unit. Right, let's carry on. I made this little video snip just to show the quality and workmanship. It really is very good. Um, excellent workmanship. And you can also see that many of the components are pretty well sealed and watertight. Now, I should imagine the idea is not to make it so watertight that you can throw it in a bath. There's the back side of the unit. But certainly, um, I think a few drops of rain um, is not going to damage the uh, the the unit. Right, um, then the buttons, there's the gimbal control button, then we move on to the yaw and throttle, there's some toggle switches, some pots, some more toggle switches, 
and there's the button that switch on switches on the spotlight all right and then this i'm just going to pause the video this is actually one button combination can i call it that it's one button with six little selectors and that goes out in channel nine now this works very well to set your flight modes all right now the fact that it goes out in channel nine don't worry about it you can actually configure that uh, to go to channel out of channel five it uses channel five so very nice feature there right so those are all the oh and there's the ethernet connection plus the charger connection plus the usb and the tf card so there's a rundown of the connectors on the unit right let's get going with the software there you can see whoops yeah, that's a little bit better there's the h16 tool the settings and the q ground control that's the three icons that i'll be looking at first up the h16 tool you click on it there's a whole bunch of selections that does some configuration i'm just going to go into the one that says rudder capacity checking it really shows you all the channels and as you modify the channel the value that's been sent out all right so you can check the channels there then we go to settings and first one there is wi-fi i'm just going to stop it there i'm not going to go into the wi-fi settings now um, but that together with under more there's the tethering and wi-fi hotspot and now these are the connectivity issues that I think is very, very nice on this unit. And on the next video, I will say a little bit more about that. So that's where you set that up. But I really need to get to a very important thing, and that's the language. There's the little icon. Now, when you get the unit, obviously the default language is going to be Chinese. So if you're in China, that's not a problem. If you are in a different country and you can't read Chinese, then you need to change this. And obviously with it being Chinese, you won't be able to read these uh, menu settings, all right? But the icons still stay the same. So you can go to the little globe icon and you can select languages. And then you select the top entry, which is, it's going to be languages, even though you can't read it. Um, and let me just pause the video again there. Then it brings up a list of languages, all right? Now, I've changed mine already. The default was Chinese, and I think there was a second language in there as well. The, what is important is, in this list, the language that is on the top of the list is the one that's active. So if you've got a language, a list of three languages, the top one will be the active one. And you change the order by simply dragging the language up and down the list. You hold your thumb down and you drag it up and down the list. That will make sure that the H16 uh, language in the operating uh, system environment is correct. All right. Just a heads up. Um, sometimes Q ground control does not... Um, pick that up if there's one uh, if there's more than one language in this list okay now the fix that is to make sure that there's only one language in the list and then Q, Q ground control will work fine so that's just a heads up there I click on the add button and you add English right and of course there's also uh, settings for the display sound all those things and I'm not going to go through all of those now. Bottom left is Q ground control. Let's just start that up quickly and show you what that looks like. Um, obviously, it's not going to connect because the drone is not powered. All right, there's the map view. Um, and there's the flight control. Let me just pause it there. Uh, flight control screen. You'll notice that I touched the screen. Yes, it's a touch screen. So... Once uh, the uh, drone is calibrated, um, you can actually use the touch screen to control the drone and, of course, the screens. Um, if, the, uh, if you want to view the video feed, there's a separate little um, screen that you can uh, expand and make smaller just by using the touchscreen feature. So that's very nice. I quite like that very much. All right, so that's just a 
there's the unit uh, that was just a very brief introductory video on the H16 um, the next video I'd like to make is one that shows you that connectivity issues once again uh, not issues um, functionalities once again I like that very much uh, and while I was testing this, um, I'd like to say thank you to Lindy and the engineers at COAV. While I was testing this, um, I was always asking them questions and they were always ready to help out with the answers. So thank you very much. Right, I'll see you on the next video then. We can have a look at all the connectivity options on the H16. Thanks for listening. Cheers.